Evening, everyone. Evening, everyone, and welcome. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm going to start. Thank you for coming to the board meeting this evening. In compliance with the Open Public Means Law of New Jersey, notice of this March 12th meeting of the Bridgewater Raritan Regional Board, board of Education was posted electronically on the district website and provided on January 3rd, 2024, by sending to the annu an sending annual written notice to the Courier News, Star Ledger, Bridgewater Town Clerk. Raritan Borough Clerk, and by posting on the bulletin board in the Harmon v. Wade Administration meeting. If you'd like, can you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe, here. Ms. Freelander, here. Ms. Lee, here. Mr. Joshi, here. Ms. Kalistri, here. Mr. Singer, here. Ms. Asuna, here. Ms. Lochran, here. Mr. Walker, present. We have a quorum. Um, next on the item agenda is the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Walker. So tonight, as we see in front of us, we have some special guests this evening. And I want to take this opportunity to celebrate and honor the accomplishments of, a, of the group of young people in front of us here uh, who are representing Bridgewater Raritan High School. In its second year of existence, the unified basketball team qualified for the state tournament and ended up losing in a tough fought battle at home to the eventual state champion, Hunter and Central. All right, I want to start by thanking Dr. Dan Sylvia, the Director of Special Services, and Jen Horn, the, the supervisor of special education 9 through 12, for helping to make this program a reality two years ago. Next, I want to thank the coaching staff, Cynthia Wong, Chris Osborne, Leslie Thompson, and Rhonda Fishburn. <laughs> and we saved the best for last. Now we want to honor the students here in front of us. Um, and I, I mean this sincerely, that these young people in front of us are emblematic of the values we try to hold at Bridgewater Raritan. We see the slogan, one and all, in all of our buildings. And, and as we all know, and any, any of the people who are part of the, the Unified program or who watch the Unified program, know that the benefit is built on inclusion, equality, equity, and belonging for all students, all right? And, and I'd also like to add that it's one of the few sporting events I've ever been to where people walk away happy whether you win or lose. Now, I know a lot of people weren't happy at the last game, but, but it was. And, and look, finally, I think what's so important is all of you in the room tonight, you're part of something special. And I mean that sincerely. And, and I love to see the friendships that you've made, right, and, and the way that everyone interacts and, and works with each other and the sense of belonging it's created. You're part of something really good here, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you. And now next, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Walker. We've got an official board resolution. We have a Bridgewater Raritan Regional School Board, School board District Education at Proclamation, whereas the hard work dedication, sportsmanship, talent, and exceptional team chemistry of the 2023-2024 Bridgewater Raritan High School Unified Basketball Team finished with a record-winning season, enabling them for the first time to qualify for the New Jersey State Tournament. And whereas Coach Cynthia Wong and assistant coaches Chris Osborne, Leslie Thompson, and Rhonda Fishburn provided leadership and support while encouraging the, the talent of all the team's members. And whereas... High School Athletics provides opportunities for all as they can teach students teamwork, cooperation, sportsmanship, and leadership. And whereas student athletics can take these learning characteristic character traits into their everyday lives as they build confidence not only on the playing field but also in the world. Now, therefore, be it resolved on behalf of the Bridgewater Raritan Regional School District Board of Education, the administrative staff, st and the administrative staff, I, Barry Walker, board president, do hereby recognize and congratulate the members of the 2023-2024
Bridgewater Raritan High School Unified Basketball Team for their achievement as New Jersey State Tournament qualifies. Resolved this 12th day of March, 2024, the board officially recognizes the accomplishment of these coaches and team of students and calls upon the school community to join in the celebration of the success. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right, so now we, we would like to call up the team members individually. And after you receive your certificate, once we go through everybody, I'm going to ask everyone to join us down in the old gymnasium here uh, for a group photo. So parents will have the opportunity to, take, to really get the whole group together, get a formal shot. And, and, uh, and again, I appreciate all of you for coming out you know, on a busy uh, middle of the week evening for all of you. Okay, first up, Matthew Baxter. Thank you. Pranav Bagarath. Haley Billerman. Matthew Burrell. Michael Coretti. <laughs> Joseph Siufo. <laughs> Anthony Confalone. Kyle Casenza. Congrats, buddy. Chris Craig. I think Chris was the best shooter on the team, wasn't he? <laughs> One of them. I mean, he had his day. Yeah. Okay. Owen Crimmins. Audra Day. Yeah. Oh, did I, say, did I say it? Audra. Okay. Yeah. Logan Ernst. Alyssa Eschman. Andrew Gallup. Aiden Higgins. Thank you. 
Matthew Leiberger. <laughs> Nicholas Lloyd. <laughs> Lee Berger, I'm sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> Lee Berger, thank you. I get a little nervous up here, I'm sorry. Joseph Locurtando. <laughs> John Magner. <laughs> Brody Nussman. <laughs> okay. Daniel Oldham. Jaden Patel. Thank you. I'm sorry, I messed it up. Lexi Pearl. Emily Rada. Elton Ramirez. Look, and I, th I think we got that on the video, so we're in good shape. That was nice. Mr. Walker's going to do that to end when we're on stage. Isabel Rivera. Justin Rondanone. Joseph Spira. <laughs> Anurag Trevidi. Sarah Winchuk. Thank you. Thank you. Summer Winchuk. Thank you. Colin Woodring. Aryan Yelaman Chili. I'm sorry, I, I murdered that name. <laughs> Shana Kiyagi. And last, Cameron Yarwood. All right, finally, let's give one big round of applause to these young people. And now, now if we could head outside these doors, we'll go down to the gym and up on the stage, we'll take a group photo. No cartwheels or anything along the way. We'll be our we'll keep everyone safe.
so we're going to um, move 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 around the agenda a little bit. We're going to have the student report now. So, Iris and Tiana, are you guys ready? Yes. So I would like to start by extending our congratulations to the unified basketball team. <laughs> Uh, but they are no longer here to receive this. Um, we also wanted to touch on the second dodgeball tournament that um, took place last Friday that was sponsored by the PTO. Um, it was a major ex success this year, and the participation rate definitely increased. Last year, we um, had 15 teams that participated. This year, it was 24. So that's a definitely a big increase, and it was a very fun event. So another congratulations is due to swimmers who competed at the New Jersey State Meet of Champions, especially to those who placed, which was Erica Maltsev. She's actually a senior who is recruited for UPenn next year, and also a sophomore, Jaden Lee. Um, and last Saturday, the Winter Guard served as the host to the Mid-Atlantic Mid Indoor Network competition. Um, so they hosted 33 other teams from the tri-state area, and um, they did an incredible job. On March 1st, two Fridays ago, we had a China night. I was there and I got to experience some delicious Chinese food, fun games, and karaoke. I thought that there was great turnout and it was exciting to be there with my friends. Um, today and tomorrow, the juniors are testing for the NJGPA um, to meet their graduation requirements. So far, um, we've heard smooth things about it. Um, I guess the seniors are very excited for the delayed, um, but so far, so good. Everything's going smooth. Yes. Uh, our classes feel a lot emptier this week, and that's because the FBLA club, the Future Business Leaders of America, is on a convention to Atlantic City for a few days for the State Leadership Conference. So we're all wishing them good luck. Um, next week, the Fine Arts Festival will take place um, with the band and orchestra from our high school and middle school. Um, we're looking forward to attending, and the Prowlers definitely looking forward to covering the event as well. So we'll update you when that time happens. We are also looking forward to District Wellness Week, which will also be next week for high schoolers and middle schoolers so that we can focus on our mental and physical health. Um, an update on our seniors with the college application process. Um, there are changes. We'll do the changes of the FAFSA um, this year. Many colleges have actually pushed down their commitment dates to June 1st. The traditional date was May 1st. Um, so seniors, however, are starting to receive um, their regular decision deadlines by the end of this month. Um, and so they're looking forward to committing, but at a later deadline this year. Many high schoolers are a lot busier after school because spring sports have started, beginning with tryouts. Um, prom tickets, information about prom went out this or last week, and they will be sold. The prom tickets will be sold the week before spring break. Um, students are very excited and eager to um, go to prom. And underclassmen have been redistributed to the two new guidance counselors that we have, L. Grulick and Anthony Apazado, but seniors are staying with their current guidance counselors. And last week, I um, about Friday, um, students were sent home their results for the seal of biliteracy test that they took. Um, some statistics that we have is 68 seniors this year earned the seal out of the 86 that tested for it, um, which is about 79% pass rate, um, and 12 students earned the seal in two different languages. Um, compared to last year, 89 seniors um, earned the seal of biliteracy. Um, of the 125 that tested, um, which is a 71% pass rate. So this year, although we saw a decrease in the amount of people that took it, the pass rate went up by 8%. Um, and 10 students last year achieved the steal in two languages. Um, so me personally, I took it in French. I passed, um, and I'm very grateful. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I definitely will say I'm very grateful for the language department in our school. I've been taking French for the past six years, and I'm so happy that that's on my diploma and I can speak French. Um, also, an um, update on the digital SAT that um, was taken last week. Um, we overall heard that it went smoothly, although I think some students, some feedback that I heard um, was that they were surprised by the content of the actual test, um, I guess, or the, like the layout. I think a lot of sections were cut in half or there was different amount of questions, and I think some students weren't expecting that per se. Um, so I think, but in terms of how it went and how it was um, administered, I think it went very well. And that is the end of our report. Thank you. And, and it's great to hear all of the 
awesome things going on at the school. And uh, I know spring is in the air when we start hearing about prom tickets and things like that. And um, right, we are, we are rapidly getting towards that last quarter of the school year. And, um, you know, and, and we know if it's a board of ed and, and even school events and everything, this, right, the, the really busy time is starting very soon. So, uh, so again, it, it's great to hear your reports and, and really commenting on uh, all the great things that are happening at Bridgewater Rare. I just, I just want to do a quick little add to the two testing parts. So the first one, the, bilit the seal of biliteracy, you did an excellent job explaining that with the change in the percentage. Um, we are expanding that into 11th grade next year, so we're excited because we think next year will be the first year where we are also going to be um, offering it to 11th graders. So we'll see what happens there. And I also heard that the SATs went very smoothly. Mrs. Kachis actually was there on Saturday to make sure that we didn't have any technology problems. And from what I understand, it went really well for the, for the first administration. So thank you. And, and do I have it correct? It's the first time it was done digitally. Yes. And so the other thing that I think they did really well at the high school is communicating out all the things you had to do in advance, like that blue book that had to be on. I think that's what it's called on your computer and you had to have it pushed out and you had to have the test ready to go and download it. And if you were a parent in another district who didn't see this until the night before, your child was doing it last minute. But here we communicated it really well. Does he bring your own device or do they give you a device? Well, you can do either. They prefer that you bring your school device because you can push things out on it, as, you know. But you can bring your own device. And um, we also had students who take the SAT from other districts as well. So the concern was more like, ooh, what if we have a problem? They use our... Um, That's my SATs are actually... Right. But, <laughs> but, it, but you know what? It all worked out really well. So we were happy about that. So go team. Well, I want to make a comment. Uh, thank our both our student reps for a wonderful update. Not only exciting for the content, but I actually like the energy how you presented it. Thank you for the delivery. Yes. <laughs> and the completeness of the, of the update. Thank you. Yeah. A round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Superintendent's mm -hmm. uh, report. Okay. The the second part of, of my report is going to be very short um, because we're going to get on to our um, budget presentation. But uh, the one thing I wanted to add, and, and the young ladies talked about the Festival of Arts next week, but I, I believe, Mr. Moran, that we're going to attempt to live stream some of these, these uh, concerts for the first time. So in, in collaboration, so Bruce, in collaboration with BRTV, right, we're we're rolling out the first live stream of our uh, school concerts. Well, that goes tomorrow. Wow. Yay. So that, that will be fun. If you can't attend in person, you'll yeah. be able to view it online or, or later. So fingers crossed everything will go well. But, uh, but I, I really want to give kudos for, for some of the folks who have made that happen. How can we push this message out? Do we send a constant contact email or something like that so that people know? It is? Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, and the thousands of fans that are watching us tonight. Yeah, I right. <laughs> spread the word as well. We need more people that the fans tonight. So, yeah. Anyhow. Is, is there uh, is, 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 are any of these, these events things you need tickets for, you need to have planned in advance, or if you, uh, can, can you come the night of? You can come the night of. Can come the night of. Okay. Just show up. So that's what I thought. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Stars and the budget presentation. Thank you. So tonight is the um, the uh, presentation on the 2024-2025 tentative budget. This is a tentative budget. What this means is that um, we will then, after approval, hopeful approval tonight, we submit this to the county, and the county uh, Department of Ed will review it for um, various things, and um, they might provide some feedback. If not, um, we will move forward with a public hearing on April 30th, um, but between now and April 30th, obviously, the board can have uh, conversations uh, about the budget, and it is able to change before April 30th. So with that... 
Okay, so as we start off, we're looking at our uh, district enrollment at, at a glance. So we've got the enrollment in the, uh, in the top row, number of employees. So we've got 7,878 students, 1,261 employees, and that's everyone from administrators to teachers to, to uh, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, et cetera. The square footage of our buildings, 1.23 million square feet. We transport 8,102 students. And the reason why that number is higher than the enrollment is our out-of-district placements and also uh, private school transportation that we provide. And, and in the final row, you have our district budget, which is $178.4 million. The budget goals, we, we really tried to align them to our district goals. And again, I, just a, a quick summary, our district goals are to optimize conditions for learning by implementing effective instructional practices that support all students. We want to ensure a healthy and safe learning environment by refining operations and providing opportunities that foster student and staff social and emotional well-being. And finally, we want to ensure equitable allocation of district resources to support the district's mission and goals, including access and utilization of grade level materials, resources, and programs. So the challenges that we face this year are not unlike prior years. Um, we are uh, constrained by a 2% tax levy cap. In certain years, there is an, an ability to go over that 2% uh, tax levy cap with uh, adjustments to the budget. However, we don't uh, currently qualify for any of those in this in this year's budget. So when you have a 2% tax levy cap on the revenue side, um, the other things that are pushing that to the brink are personnel costs. You know, most of our contracts are settled for over 3%. Benefits, everybody knows health benefits, medical benefits are uh, well in excess of 5% increasing. Transportation continues to be um, a driver that, no pun intended, um, <laughs> of costs. In fact, the, uh, the um, CPI for uh, transportation this year um, that we're allowed to renew contracts for um, is 5.81%. Um, and then obviously utilities and the inflation that um, is currently well over 2% as well. So despite those challenges, um, we believe we put together a, uh, a quality budget here that uh, addresses the goals. Um, so we are recommending a 2% tax levy uh, increase on the revenue side. You see our state aid number went up. This also includes we're um, anticipating more extraordinary aid this year. And what extraordinary aid is, is um, aid specifically for high um, cost uh, students, um, special education, special needs students. Um, so we apply every year to, um, based on our actual costs of um, educating uh, certain special needs students, and we um, generally get some aid if they cost over $40,000 if we do it in-house, or if they're out of district placement over $55,000, we will get some of that money back. Um, we continue to uh, reduce our reliance on the fund balance appropriation. Again, we're going down, uh, which we've done the past several years, of uh, $250,000. And miscellaneous has uh, reduced a little, but that is largely due to our goal of eliminating the activity fees that we normally collect. So assuming that we pass um, this budget, um, come May, we'd also then eliminate that policy that calls for activity fees. I believe we mentioned this previously. I know we did at a finance committee meeting. How is the money being spent that uh, those revenues are being collected for? Um, salaries and benefits are uh, a big bulk of it, approximately $134 million. Uh, maintenance and operations, that includes uh, utilities and the upkeep of our facilities at $15.6 million. Transportation, as, as I indicated before, is, uh, is, is significant. That's $13.9 million, and that's a, a, a larger percentage going up. There's a general category that we're just calling other that lumps together um, legal services, communications, contracted services, um, software uh, licenses. This is software licenses have, has gone up uh, recently as we uh, expand technology and our use of it. 
Uh, tuition, this is out of district placements. These are the students that we can't educate within the district and need to send to uh, private schools or public schools that have the programs that they need. Um, supplies and techs, this is uh, straightforward for classroom uh, supplies and techs throughout the district. Our capital uh, projects and equipment, um, that is going down a little, that is uh, approximately 1.8 million. And this general fund totals the same as the revenues, which is $183 million, a total increase of 2.59%. And again, facing the uh, constraints that I talked about earlier, um, we feel that's uh, a, a good place to be. A uh, different way to look at the um, expenditures is the good old uh, pie chart. As you can see, we have uh, instruction of about 40%. The business functions is 20%. That's inclusive of health benefits. That's in the health benefit. Health benefits are part of the business function line items. Um, then you have support services. Support services are things such as uh, guidance and child study teams that aren't necessarily specifically in the classroom, but outside the uh, classroom and supporting the education of students. Administration at 6.1. Operations at 8.6, again, that is maintenance and utilities. Transportation is 7.6%. Tuition of, uh, again, out of district tuition is about 3%. And equipment and projects is 1%. Some of the things new to the budget this year, um, we were receiving, or we are currently are receiving ESSER funds uh, that are being spent on some positions outside of the general fund. That money goes away come June 30th, so we are putting, putting those positions back into the operating budget. These are uh, mainly instructional coaches. Um, we added two new guidance counselors, um, and this is being kind of funded through a reduction of staff through attrition and enrollment. We are um, reducing it at the seventh, eighth grade level, for another team of, or I believe another team of five uh, FTEs. Um, and then by attrition and enrollment at the 5-6 level and 9-12 level of uh, six um, FTEs as full-time equivalents, which is staff members. Or positions, I should say, not staff members, positions. Curriculum. Would you like to uh, jump on that or do you want me to butcher, or do you want me to butcher it? <laughs> Turn this on first. It's on. I kind of would like you to butcher it and then I'll butt in. But um, all right, so for curriculum in the permanent allocations, there are really four areas that we're always looking at. So one is um, curriculum writing, which is really your summer projects. And then we have materials and resources, textbooks, and professional development. So when we look at, um, you already moved on, just go back to the first one, please. Um, so for summer projects, um, that really involves curriculum writing, curriculum revisions, and projects. And from that I mean, um, that, for instance, the state often changes our standards. We have a lot of change in standards over the last several years. This year, we actually have a standards that are changing in English language arts and math, and so we will be realigning all our curriculum documents in English language arts and math K-12. Um, additionally, we have new courses that we create, such as when we're creating robotics engineering courses, we'll have to write curriculum for that. That would be new as opposed to revised. And then we have projects, so when we're creating new resources or assessments, um, also AP, College Board is good at like giving us new um, requirements for courses that involve revision as well. So those are some of the things that we would do over the summer as part of summer projects. Um, the second area is supplies and materials. Peter. <laughs> So supplies and materials are any kind of instructional materials that are not really specific to textbooks or electronic platforms. Um, so this aligns with our program development. For example, we're obviously going to need to buy supplies and materials for our robotics and engineering courses, cameras for digital photography. When we're creating phonics programs, we need to buy decodable text or math. You use manipulatives, right, to learn mathematical concepts. And then also just something that's kind of interesting is all the in-district testing that we do for universal screening, for gifted and talented, for intervention, for the seal of biliteracy we just mentioned, or even when we're testing everyone with PSAT, that all also would come out of the supplies and materials funding. Um, 
textbooks and resources, this really shifts widely from year to year. So when we're in a year where we're doing a major um, new textbook adoption, like we did a couple years ago, two years ago, with the math resource, that's, that's you know an expensive item when you're doing something K-5 or K-8. For next year, we actually don't have a major textbook adoption. What we do have is that we're renewing our science K-5. So usually when we have an electronic platform that works as our textbook or our resource, we have like licenses for three to five years. So it's in a renewal phase. Um, we also have some other uh, textbooks that we need to look at because of changes with AP classes. And then finally, we have professional development. So when you consider all the things that I just mentioned, the new courses, the change in standards, um, additional resources, anything that we're doing like that requires that we're providing professional development for staff. So this is something that's ongoing. And those are really the four areas in curriculum. Thank you, I couldn't have done it any better. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Stars. <laughs> the uh, next up is technology mm -hmm. allocation. Um, we have an annual um, refresh of uh, Chromebooks um, and cases and license for students in grades five and grade nine. Um, we're looking for new laptops for staff at a certain at grades five through 12. We continue to update the infrastructure and uh, cybersecurity evaluation improvements are, are ongoing. And as we have done last year, we are using managed services and backup um, as a service um, with the technology monies as well. And I mentioned earlier about renewal of online resources. That's one of the areas that was in the uh, software line items. Um, before I go on, I'd just like to mention that um, at the FFT meetings, we did have uh, Ms. Jones and uh, Ms. Kachis, and actually Dr. Sylvia also came to discuss their specific um, areas and to go into more detail of, of their uh, allocations and their expenditures. Facilities projects, some of these you've already uh, have voted on and seen. Um, we're doing the grandstands this upcoming uh, summer, hillside gym floor replacement. We're hopeful for a turf three, three field replacement. We're in communications with the uh, township who is supposed to be taking the lead on that. Um, so we're still optimistic about that happening. Uh, painting projects. And in addition to all these, we have all the referendum work that is going on. We have secure vestibules at all the schools except the high school. Um, window replacements should be getting started at JFK, being the first school to hit that. But um, as you know, we've awarded a, a contract for six schools to, I believe it's six or seven schools to be um, started. Um, we're doing toilet renovations at the middle school and the Barcelona field house and parking renovations of the uh, Barcelona complex is uh, all occurring this summer. So it's another busy summer for the district as far as facilities is concerned. Um, <clears throat> now we get to the fun part of the tax impact, and it's a little showing it a little differently this year. And it's a uh, <sighs> it, it's not it's not a easy uh, easy area to uh, to explain or or um, so I'll give my best. Um, so the average assessment uh, on on an unequalized house in Bridgewater is five hundred sixty four thousand three hundred seventeen dollars. Um, we currently don't have the uh, the equalized uh, ratios for Bridgewater and Raritan, um, but we do have is the equalized numbers um, that impact the uh, the taxes as far as um, both Bridgewater and Raritan. So the average assessment up there is really for informational purposes only, um, because to calculate your own individual taxes, you'd want everything to be either equalized or unequalized. You can't necessarily have a, have a combination of the both, of both of them. Um, so <clears throat> the general fund, and I also this year broke it out by general fund and debt service fund tax rate, because the debt service, as you know, is to start the payment off the bonds that were previously um, was approved last year and that we just um, sold in December. So that's going to be a tick up for this first school for this 24, um, but then it should be leveling off because this is the first year that we're um, uh, the debt service is about 10 million dollars, um, although we're getting close to four million from the state. So with that, the Bridgewater uh, uh, general fund school tax rate is about 1.27 equalized, which means on the an equalized assessment of $100,000 would be about an increase of $46.63. 
The debt service in Bridgewater on an equalized $100,000 assessment would be $23.15. In Raritan, um, the average assessment unequalized is 322664 for um, the average assessed home. In regards to the general fund tax rate, it's 1.24, I'll say, um, which is actually a decrease of $9.75. Now, what happened? Um, well, let me get to the debt service. Debt service is going up $19.51. You see the rate there, 0 0.064. So part of the calculation is the rateables for each of the communities. And in Bridgewater, the rateables uh, went down a little bit by 0.13%. But in Raritan, um, they went up 5.2%. So that's part of the reason why that it's showing as a decrease per assessment because the rateables went up. Um, the other thing that changes from year to year is the split or the ratio between um, Bridgewater and Raritan. Um, actually, the ratio this year is Bridgewater is getting is responsible for 86.74 percent, and uh, Raritan is responsible for 13.26 percent, and that's kind of a shift actually from from Bridgewater. Bridgewater had a higher number last year to 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 Raritan, and that fluctuates every year, and that's based on the equalized valuation of both communities. So because Raritan's um, equalized uh, rateables went up, their percentage also then went up of what they should be uh, responsible for. So um, like I said, that's a, uh, <laughs> a down and dirty, try to expl explain it as uh, um, clear as possible. I know it's probably not clear, um, but it's not, a, it's not an easy uh, calculation. So with that, we will open up for questions. Can, can I jump in on that last point? Certainly. Thank you. Um, I, I know the equalization and un unequalized. I'm still still learning it. Um, is that something that happens just between the two town between the two towns, or because we're a regional district, or is that a equalization a broader thing that happens at the state level, and then impacts us? Because I understand like like the ratio makes sense, and I, you've broken that down for us before. The the one thing that gets is is the actual tax rate in in Raritan at least winds up being higher than that. So I'm not sure if that's because the, uh, I know that the houses aren't uh, reassessed as frequently. I'm not sure if that impacts it. Do you have it any does. sense what might cause the that, number that on that bill just to be higher, even if the ratio is correct? That, that does impact it because I think the, the um, generally speaking, in, in the, historically, mm -hmm. the uh, Bridgewater has been, uh, you know, their, their, their equalized value, their equalized ratio has been about 90, 90% area and Raritan has only been about 75 percent area yeah so because of that um, that's what drives that rate up at least the, the, at least the figure the um, school tax rate yeah, yeah. school tax rate up. Is, is there any way to predict what that will be uh, ahead of time like when it comes to the April presentation uh, possibly I can uh, I get that information from either the county or the tax mm -hmm. assessor so yeah there's a lot of different sources of stuff's coming from yeah. is my point from this thanks for that and for all your work on the budget. So I, I have a few comments, questions, observations, if you will. Um, so for the past, I don't know how many years, we have to stay within that 2% budget, right? Correct. And we've been staying T within that. The tax that levy cap has, yeah. it, yes. And we've been staying within that for? Uh, well, there's been a couple years where we actually have used um, waivers to exceed it, that you're okay. allowed to exceed it by. Yeah. Um, and with regards to the uh, the assessments and how much it's going to be per hundred thousand um, dollars, this has nothing to do with the referendum or any of that, right? This has no impact on the passing of the referendum. Well, which ref so the big referendum? The only thing that it, it's it is increasing the debt service. Right. Uh, uh, cost for the district. Okay. Th what I'm getting at is that, um, you know, the, the numbers, in spite of the reassessments and the referendum and all of that, the numbers do look, you know, pretty steady and stable throughout the years. Uh, does that have anything to do with our rating? I mean, you know, the bond that we sold, we got an excellent um, interest rate on that. 
Correct. which kind of reduced um, it reduced the total cost of the referendum, you know, over the life of the, the bonds because it's a lower interest rate. And, but that's all now uh, put into put into the calculations right. as far as the annual cost of that. So it's due to, and I'm just trying to educate myself. It's due to our, you know, I know this is a buzzword, but us being fiscally responsible throughout the years to get that nice rate. Otherwise, this could have been even higher. We received a good bond rating um, based on our finances, which we believe helped the yeah. reduced rate interest rate that we got. Yes. Okay. I yeah, know that's why because I know that uh, in this current climate to get a good rate is difficult. So we must have been doing something right to get that good rating. Um, Peter and, and his team timed it perfectly. <laughs> they were able to time that market <laughs> right when that that note dropped. We we locked it in. So. Yeah. So I just want to he make knew sure that, that November that was going to be yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> that the budget and the numbers are are good, and that is the reason why we're seeing the numbers that we're seeing. Otherwise, this could have been even higher. And you know, with the assessments sure. coming and all of that, this could have even pushed it higher. So I just want to make sure that people understand that uh, we're doing it right. I believe this board <laughs> is very financially responsible. Yes. All right, that's, as, that's all I wanted to make uh, a comment on. Thank you. For uh, transportation, there was, uh, last year there was an increase for hazardous busing. Is that included in the, the budget for, for this year? Has that been assumed into the? Yes, so l yeah, last year we removed that as a revenue but and in, uh, incorporated the cost is still in there, yes. Yeah, yep, correct. Uh, th theirs were used bank cap, correct? That was a bank cap, or? or your memory might be better than mine. I think we use bank cap for that. We yeah. use that's actually an example of using yeah. bank cap because that was on fund of revenue stream, a revenue stream that it was no longer possible. So we use bank cap to accommodate that during the budgeting process. Can I have a question? Sure. All right. So um, I was looking at slide five. Uh, there is the um, uh, twenty. Three to twenty-four um, operating budget local tax levy. That column. Can you turn to that page, please, so that we all are looking at where we're looking at. So that number one fifty-eight, eight twelve, and forty-five. That is actually uh, a number that I looked at our uh, meeting last year uh, when we approved our budget from for this twenty-three to twenty-four on April twenty-fifth. Uh, if you look at your um, record, if all of us look at our record, that number is uh, uh, actually 156, 355, 940, 945. So that was what we budgeted for um, at April of last year. And uh, it's not the same number as what was on this page of uh, uh, this slide. And that difference is about 2.6 million. And I understand that is the um, that is referendum kindergarten operation budget. So, it, so um, can I uh, ask uh, how did we spend this money? Uh, where is this money right now? Like since we budgeted in last April, not budgeting for the income of the uh, of the operating cost, and now it appears here. Uh, what's the difference, and where did it go? So. The 158 is does incorporate the 2.46 million that was voted on and approved in November. Yes, it so does include the. My correct. question that's is. That's what the 58. That's what the 158 is. So I just want to make that clear. Right. So, um, so yes. So now that is our base general tax levy that we work from. Uh huh. Um, that 2.46 is now built in here for 24-25. We know that we have to have that 2.4 um, available to us when we. Um, begin the full day kindergarten in uh, hopefully September of 26. So that money currently is set aside uh, within the proposed budget in the um, uh, transportation. There's $800,000 in there because it's, that was part of the 2.4. There's the um, 1.18, I believe, that's in Fund 12, which is our capital, which is our projects uh, piece. And then we also bumped up the cur curriculum permanent allocation by $500,000 to make that 2.6. So that's where that money is. 
So are they spent or are they set aside? Well, I'm talking about this is what's in the 24, in this set aside currently for the 24-25, and they, it will be spent in 24-25 for those, for those different things. But when it comes to uh, the budget being built for 26-27, it's going to be pulled from that, from those areas, to, to fund the necessary staffing that we need. Um, I'm not certain that I fully understand. Let me rephrase. So the uh, the 2.6 difference between what's shown on slide here and what we budgeted for last April, that money is allocated to spend this year, but it hasn't been spent this year yet. I was speaking to the 24-25 proposed budget. In 23-24, um, that money is going to be used. Uh, it's going to be used for one-time items if it's going to be used. And so by end available. of this year? Yes. And if by it's, not, and if it's not, then it gets rolled into um, either fund balance or capital reserve or maintenance reserve. So so basically, um, for 23-24, mm -hmm. last April, we budgeted for 156. And now we have a, a difference because of referendum passing, a 2.6 million. And we're um, having an excess money that for for... We haven't spent yet, right? For for, we, we for the rest some of it already. this year. We we've earmarked some of it already. I think the 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 answer to your question is what you have to do from a budget point of view is you have to make sure that that money that was approved by taxpayers for a certain purpose goes to that purpose, and mm -hmm. we know it. That's in what two I'm years. trying to make sure. Yeah, and, uh, and and exactly. So what we're trying to do is in the budget those have. Right, so you have a couple of years before it's going to be spent on those items. You have to make sure that it's placed in, in, in areas that are one-offs, so to speak, versus recurring costs. And that's why Peter explained that, it, that it's in capital projects. It's also in curriculum. So when the time comes, we can easily pull from those areas and, and push it in. But, but will the money be utilized for projects related to, you know, to... Uh, the objective, absolutely, but they're they're in one-off accounts, and they're not allocated towards salaries, et cetera, because we've got to make sure that we can we can hire those folks as we get closer. And then, yeah, we we talked with Dr. Fonder; he could probably explain it a lot better than I can. We're also going to start hiring people next year for kindergarten. We may have smaller class sizes, but as we know, when we plan for this. We can't just go and advertise for 15 kindergarten teachers in one year. You're going to have to go. You're, you're going to hire a few, then hire a few more, and a few more. So as time goes on, we're going to allocate that and make sure that, that the dollars are used for, for the purpose that it, was, uh, that it was voted on by the public. It, we know that we're going to have this 2.6 2 .6 million again this year. Um, with this, with this 2.6 million from last year, that we didn't budget the expense for. And for this year, again, that we don't really have a full operating kindergarten yet, would it be possible to use that and offset some of those 2% cap? Because um, I think that we got to be um, running our, our programs, but that we also want to be cautious on what we have to spend. And uh, when we actually have to run the kindergarten, we want to make sure that there isn't a gap. So um, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I anticipate this question from the public, and, and here's my answer, and it, 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 you may agree with it, you may disagree. Mm -hmm. In November, taxpayers voted, right, by a pretty wide margin, to approve a certain amount of dollars for kindergarten. Okay, wait, wait, let me finish. For kindergarten. Now, if we were to do what you suggested, we would have taken that money and now put it towards a tax offset. That's not what the people voted for. And that would never be my recommendation because we had the democratic process. People said, I want this 2.46 million, let's call it 2.5, dedicated towards that cause. So if three months later we say, okay, now we're gonna get cute with our budget, and we're gonna offset two and a half million dollars so we don't have to raise taxes, now you don't have money to open up kindergarten. And, and if we did that, we would actually be going against 
what the majority of taxpayers and voters in the, uh, or the majority of voters voted for back in November. I, I, I hear your point. The thing is that I think the majority of voters wanted to fund the kindergarten when it's functioning. The reason that we're taking the tax already now is because a law that mm -hmm. asked us to do that. Not because, uh, so, so we have to take it, yeah. not because we needed that money to run for the kindergarten. So there is this. Wait, wait, excuse me. Yeah. Because we're not incurring the cost associated with the food economy, at least not 100%. Like okay. we are able to uh, yeah. and, get and funding. Look, the purpose here isn't a back and forth. I can tell you why we made this decision. You can choose to disagree with sure. it. Sure. Taxpayers voted for this money to go towards kindergarten. What you are suggesting is to take that money that taxpayers came out and voted to allocate that for and put it towards tax relief. That would be going against the will of the voters. Nope. And, that, and look, the board can do what they want. Okay. We can vote no, we could say we should do this, but I wouldn't support that and it wouldn't be the resolution that I bring to the table. Now this budget gets uh, passed through the, the county and eventually it has to be approved by the state as well, right? They do go the county is the, the state. Yeah, so they do go state. through it yep. by so if what uh, Mrs. Lee is saying um, would be flagged, if it was erroneously collected or was put towards some other purpose, it wouldn't be allowed, right? Uh, I don't think they would get into, they don't get into that per se. They're looking at the, the, the numbers as far as the, the tax levy, which it is currently 158.8, .8, and the fact that you're not, we're not going over 2%. Well, if I can make a comment about this, I feel like we, we should, one way or the other, account for this 2.6 million. Uh, the voters have decided to support the full-day kindergarten with that money. Before it's operational, I think it should be used appropriately with caution and with the um, mindfulness of, of how, they, how this school, school budget is impacting everyone's um, property tax. Well, we believe we did that, so we agree. Thank you. I have a question, actually. When I, I, lovely, every March I get a reassessment of my house, and in the last two years it's gone up over 20, 23%. I find it odd that the rateables have gone down. Can, I, can we request to see the breakdown of those rateables from commercial to residential? Is that possible for my tax assessor? And can, or could, it, could the tax assessor even attend an FFT or a board meeting maybe to explain the rateables a little bit better? Because I think that whole understanding, I think that's important because I think that's some of the things going on. Because I look at this number on the slide where you said the average house pays, but is that every $200,000 in rateables or is that average residential house? So I'm a little confused and this is my 10th time to the budget. And, and so, uh, you know, I'm I can, just wondering, is that possible? I, c I can share with you what he sent me, which has the breakdown of what you're looking for, I believe. The the main residential commercial. I believe so, yeah. Increase and decrease I, yeah I can share yeah, that. I, I can share that I've with seen the board. a 23 increase in my house value in the last two years. So that's just, you know, sharing. And it's public knowledge. You can look that up. So I'm not saying anything different. And I'm sure some of you others have seen that same, got the, got the assessment the last week. So I'm just concerned about that, where that's going. And if the assessed value goes up, usually your, your, your tax implication, if everyone goes up the same, kind of stays the same. And what I'm seeing here is that even though my, my assessment's going up, my taxes are going up. So I don't see the same raise uniformly across all, all areas, potentially. So just a little explanation on that from the tax service would be great. And if he feels like coming to an FFT meeting, that'd be great, or a board meeting to talk about it, that'd be wonderful too. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Stars, Mrs. Jones, Mr. Beers, great job. Um, I know the budget, you know, it's once the budget process starts, it starts all over again, so it's a never-ending project, so thank you very much. So it's the President's report. I would like to extend, um, I, I felt very inspired when I, uh, with the Unified Sports Team, I've gone, went to about three games and just watching, and Mr. Beer says it's always happy, but just the 
the commitment of all everyone out there. I think the community of it. I, I didn't get to hear the last game. I know Mrs. Law Firm was there. And, you know, they, 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 they're out there with their pride. And they represent themselves and, and really brought great, great pride to the district. Um, also, lastly, I, I want to, um, I sent an email out a while ago. And um, I'm just, um, there's a chain of command document on the website. If you want to share, I can actually want to pass it out right now to everybody just to take a look at it. And I'd like to get it modified that way if you can. Can you share it that way? Can you share it that way, please? And see if we can make it better. And it adheres to our policy 9130, which is um, goes through the, the, some questions there. We have two, two grievance areas when we get questions. So people have questions and concerns. There's a student grievance, which is policy is 5710. And the other one is the public grievance is 9130. Something to think about. If this document's not adequate, let me know. We can rephrase it. If it needs to be better, put in the website. Something to talk about. I think something can be shared in information. So that's just a comment. I was just saying this. Um, the policies are like wordy, and I thought something that looks like a flow chart that you would mm -hmm. find not cartoonish, but a little like colorful mm -hmm. and like if you have this issue do this if you have this issue do that something that can easily be shared that we're like oh I have a question you know I have a problem with homework who do I send a note to and it'll say like you should do this but something just a little yeah yeah a little, a little more fun <laughs> I think one thing that might be helpful also is that a lot of this um, or some of this presumes it's a student or a parent if you have someone mm -hmm. in the community who has a, a question for us as the board or yeah. the uh, just the administration, if you go to the, I guess that would be under curriculum, I guess all, I, I guess that first section, classroom teacher or relevant staff member, I guess the way classroom teacher doesn't make sense, but finding that relevant staff member. So there might be, if we're gonna look at this, there might be something to do for people who don't have any kids, which is a lot of people. But have no kids in the, in the school. Si have, uh, no kids in the school system. So this is true. So, this no is kids true. Or, or currently no kids attending at attending the school district, or right. at all. You're right. Who may have suggestions or input or right. complaints or. Well, so there's a complaint policy. Anything. There is a way to grievance policy. That's mm -hmm. ninety one thirty. So just everyone knows there is a grievance policy for a public complaint is in that. In that policy. Okay. Well, Maybe we can lay that out better. Yeah, I think it's a good that. idea. I just want to bring this to your attention. I think we get a lot. Always get a lot of questions, yeah. and how to handle it. And so this gives you something to look at. I know I shared it earlier. Yeah. We had an email about something. Mm -hmm. I tried to be frank, and working through the training command makes things more effective. Oh, absolutely. And we're trying to make the most efficient operation and go it. And, and so just passing that on. Yeah, just my only. Yeah. So we'll, we'll you know, bring that up again. I'll make note of it. I'll see what we can do. I'll look around out there. Yes. I do have one more question. What would be an appropriate thing for someone to bring to the board, a member of the public? Where, on, where, where is that on the chain of command? That's a good question. It depends what it might be. If it's curriculum related, it would go towards the administration. Right. Everything goes if towards some facilities. Like, is there ever it would go, go to the administration. Most of it goes to the administration. Yeah. Coming to the board would be a budget question potentially, yeah. or a um, I'm trying to think policy. Policy. Thank policy. you very much. Regulation. Yeah. You know, superintendent question because he works for us. We have one employee that type of area. Other than that, the administration handles the majority of the questions. It's not our job in a way. So just kind of, you know, keep takes a lot of weight off your shoulders. Yeah, we can add to that. If, yeah. if it's this, exactly. That's all I had, and I want to thank everyone for the, the um, unified. They're not here anymore, but coming that that was great. So I, uh, I love student achievement, recognizing students. And next on the agenda, the committee reports. We only do it once a month. Yeah. That's the way it's that's the way it's been handled. It only does once a month, correct, Peter? Um, committee reports. Mr. Jossi, Academic Committee. Our next meeting will be uh, next week, March 21st, virtually. Um, next, committee, re committee relations. Ms. Calistri. Um, we met on March 5th at 5 p.m. virtually. In attendance was myself, Mrs. Hasuna, Mr. Beers, Mr. Walker, and Mr. Moran. Um, we started out by talking about strategic planning. We discussed the second meeting and how it went and how there were 58 community members who were present. 
we discussed that the final meeting would be March 6th, but obviously that already happened. <laughs> um, and then we felt that we had a really wide range of um, community involvement. Next, we discussed the high school and middle school graduation. Uh, we talked about how they plan to move the middle school graduation to 6 p.m. on Wednesday, June 19th, so that families who have both 8th grade students and 12th grade students will have more time to get from one graduation to the other. We then discussed the school calendar uh, for 20, I think what the year, what year? Thanks, 2025, 2026. I forgot that in my notes. Uh, we discussed going back to school on Friday, June 2nd, 2026, after the winter break. We thought that many families would be away or not return for one day since it was a Friday. So the committee thought that it would be better for students and teachers to return on January 5th. Um, and if we do that, the day would be made up by having graduation on Friday, June 19th, 2026. Any questions? I have a question. Um, so there are two calendars um, linked for this evening. Which one are we voting to approve? Or are we discussing? Or, are we, or is it a discussion? Yeah, I was hoping for a brief discussion, okay. and then we choose one and put it up. Got it. Oh. OK. I had a question not really sure. to um, When will we see the results of the strategic planning? It's a good question. Um, we received notes from Gwen um, at the end of last week. So we're going to take a look at, at that with our team. And I would say you could be prepared for a, um, a presentation to the full Board of Education and to the community. And, and we'll run it past committees prior to the May meeting. All right, a The last meeting in April is pretty packed. We've got renewals, all those types of things, final budget uh, hearing. So we, we're we looking at one of the May meetings to present that to everybody. And then that'll, that will provide us plenty of time for once, once we go through that, then when we form district goals, et cetera, we can utilize that as, as, uh, as a guide. We could share preliminary with the board through a brief next time. You want to do that, something like that? That'd be great. We have the document. It's just a came on Friday, so that's where it's at. And we had, I was just wondering, we didn't have, in the third meeting, we had less turnout, which we expected. But it was bad weather, so it was rainy, so. It wasn't snowing, it was just raining, so. But and we, we also have had been updated crosses. on the first two strategic plannings. Yeah. We've gotten emails already. It's right. just yeah. the third, so we yeah, actually. we just got it on correct. Friday, so it wasn't. Yeah. Like correct, and yeah. Bruce and I are gonna yeah. huddle up this week, and we're gonna send something out to, to everyone, you know, to the board and then to, to the community, just a brief synopsis. And then we'll have it more in depth for on our constant contact at the end of the month. So if it was I nice. But was we, we were still uh, approximately 40 people at that last meeting. That was a good time. We were in that neighborhood. A so lot of good discussions. There were. There were. So it was fun. And, and that was expected as Gwen went through the process, explained to us here in a, at the meetings. It, it happens. You have attrition. And those, you know, it takes a lot of time. And so we had some new, new ones coming in, some old ones coming in. So it was a nice mix of both in the, in the group. I would love to see what we did, especially at that first meeting, as like a once a year or once a semester, just like a community night to come and break up into random groups with people that you don't know and chat about stuff related to the school. I thought it's, I was I thought it was very impressed with everything that people said. If I can add a comment to that, I think it was a great process that we're, we're taking. Um, I think we have a lot of community participants. Um, glad to hear uh, the voices from the community. Um, I was curious, like, um, for the for the summaries, does that come from Guan, or we actually process it uh, in our in our administration or one of the committees? So how do we do that? The Gwen summary. Gwen summarize it. Gwen, Gwen summarize the, mm -hmm. the work of, of uh, each each group who presented right at, at the final mm -hmm. meeting. Then. We're going to take that as a team, and we've got to create a a, uh, a plan, mm -hmm. right? An actual action plan based on these goals. So we're going to go through that. Um, you know, it's something that I, I know we typically have some type of board retreat in April or May in that time of year, and that might be a nice topic to uh, to discuss at that. Okay, so we'll go through our full board kind of uh, looking. Uh, yeah, First. I mean the action plan I is made by by the administration. Obviously, we'll we'll mm -hmm. take input, but it's it's not a you know 
kind of a free for all item. So, so the, the administration will take it and then, but they will go through a whole board at the retreat level. That, that would be a best practice. Unless that, yeah, so that's yeah. our plan, sounds like. I, I would like yeah, And then the, their job is to do how to execute the plans that came from the, what came out of the goal setting. And then also, it, it will present it to the full board, also the board meeting usually does too. So we'll discuss it at the committee, probably go that way. Yep. I think having it go through a board would be a, 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 a good idea. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're 100% transparent. Yep. Okay, nothing else? Just one, one oh, random okay. question on graduation <laughs> to, to swing back. I know it's one o'clock. I, I was planning, the last one I went to, I, I forget what time it started, but I know that if you'd gotten there at that time, you would have been late and all, for all intents and purposes because everyone was already pressing, pr processing in and had taken their seats. I know it's a one o'clock start, and, and it may be too early to know this. Is it like doors at one o'clock? Is it the ceremony at one o'clock? Just yeah. for and the procession will start at one o'clock. Procession starts at one. So if you've so. been to any of our graduations, that takes yeah. about twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah. So I I would say the procession begins at one. The actual mm -hmm. ceremony up on the dais that's probably one thirty ish. Okay, so people should be plan on arriving before. I'm sure you'll get people sure. there at eight a.m. But Mike, if you're if you're a little bit late, I'll. Crack open the back door. Thanks, and I appreciate it. Well, I've, just, I've snuck into a few <laughs> basketball games that way, so <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, What's that? I'm not going to tailgate. Yeah. I'll tailgate. <laughs> Get some breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to move on. Okay, next we discuss the, web, uh, the new website. Um, we are going to be actually reviewing it in person at our next meeting, just so you know. Um, <laughs> Our plan for that meeting is actually going to be on April 11th in person, but we haven't figured out the time yet. Uh, next, we did a little policy review. Um, we reviewed policy 9323. It's the notification of juvenile offender case disposition. Uh, the committee thought that all the changes from Strauss Esme were fine, and we didn't suggest anything else. Um, the last thing we did discuss, though, is how the committee wants to review policy in the future. Um, since that is a board goal, we kind of came to the consensus that we're going to put two to three policies on every agenda and review them. Any questions? Okay. Uh, we adjourned at 5.40 p.m. and our next meeting, as I said, is April 11th time to be adjourned. Mr. Singer, Finance Facilities and Transportation Committee. We met on March 4th, 2024 at 5.30. In attendance was myself, Mrs. Lochran, Mrs. Hasuna, Mr. Walker, Mr. Stars, Mr. Beers, Ms. Rogers, and Mr. Uh, Dr. Sylvia. Uh, first, we discussed the 24-25 tentative budget, which we just saw the presentation today. As uh, Mr. Stars just mentioned, uh, Dr. Sylvia was there to discuss the special education program and reasons for increased costs therein. Mr. Stars reviewed the administration's tentative budget draft PowerPoint and provided rationale for certain line items increases. The recommendation of the committee was uh, to approve the submission of the tentative budget to the county office. Public hearing and final adoption of the budget is scheduled for April 30th, as Mr. Sars has mentioned. Are there any questions about the budget that weren't previously addressed? Seeing none. Next, we reviewed the business agenda that is up for tonight. Uh, Mr. Stars reviewed the draft business action items for tonight's meeting with, sp with specific attention to the purchases, PSC&G direct install resolutions, the rod grant resolutions, and the rebidding for boilers. Uh, the consensus was to approve the action items. Uh, and I just want uh, uh, to say that we really appreciate Mr. Letso. Uh, for uh, going after those PSCNG direct install resolutions. Uh, it's going to save the district a lot of money. Um, it is something that he had brought up to the committee before, and it's really appreciated when he goes out uh, and, and does that kind of thing. Uh, any questions on in that regard? Next, we discussed policy and regulation 7610 for review. The committee reviewed and discussed the Strauss ASME recommended changes, and the committee endorsed approving the changes for the first reading set for tonight. Our next meeting is set for April 8th, and after that is April 7th, uh, May 7th, which is a date change which was agreed to at the meeting. We adjourned at 6.48 p.m. I have a quick question. Um, I had it in my notes that the budget hearing was on April 23rd. Did I have it incorrect, or did it change? Or? It is the third.
Any other questions? Leah's Angelica reports. Who did I see? Oh, sorry, personnel committee, Ms. Freelander. Sorry about that. Just to be formal, we are meeting on March 19th, 2024. Now, liaison or delegate reports. Just from Raritan, I'd like to thank everyone, uh, everyone from either community who came out to the strategic planning. Uh, at the last meeting, we were honored to have the mayor of Raritan, Nick Cara, and Councilman Mike Patente um, work uh, with two of the groups. And uh, the mayor actually uh, presented his group's finding, which was tremendous. And it really uh, drives home how a lot of the things we do, particularly with facilities and budgeting and communication, are also things that are going on at the municipal level. So I was very happy and uh, thankful that uh, we got that insight that night and from everyone. So thanks to them and thanks for putting the night on. I, I, I was really appreciative that they, they came and were active participants and, and presented as well. I don't know if it was his first choice to present, but you know, <laughs> being the mayor, I think he was kind of coaxed to do it. But, but yes, thanks, Mike. Um, Bridgewater had a, oh, my screen just went. Um, Bridgewater had a council meeting on March the 7th. Uh, there's usual business and there's uh, not a lot to report to. Um, there's next meeting on March 21st. I was there remotely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll update we the CSA meeting this morning. Um, Ms. Glister and I were there. Mr. Beers had uh, shared some drawings and some information and then updates on what are happening throughout the district. We, we saw the middle school, middle school draft and, and the also, what's happening in the field house and the, and the um, stands, stuff with the stands that's going on there. So that was good to see. Um, also, we had an Ed Foundation meeting yesterday. Share that with the yeah, so sorry. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, did you want to jump on something? Sorry. Oh, no. All right. No, I'm so sorry. before. I, and then we had Ed Foundation meeting. AJ and I attended that. AJ, I mean, we have, the, there's a golf outing they're going to do for a fundraiser on July 11th. And then a um, dinner. Is to be sometime in May sometime determined. In May. So it'll be yeah, we tried to yeah. be close by, so it'll be done that. And the mini grants are still open for that. I know they've been sent out e blasters of the district. I know there's you guys actually apply. Well, Bob got there's a, there was a superintendent grant last year, and Mr. Uh, Horan is we got the cameras for that. So they they've donated a lot back through okay. over a million dollars total in different areas over the years. So any questions? Okay. Item nine. Individuals and or groups are invited to present their concerns, comments, and requests regarding the following action items to the Board of Education at this time. In accordance with the board policy, members of the public are allotted one opportunity to address the board for a maximum of five minutes during this period of the meeting. Please be advised that a video recording of this meeting will be posted on the district's website. Seeing none, I'm going to move on. Item 10, approval of minutes from the February 27th meeting 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Hasuna? Yes. Ms. Lochran? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Action items. Personnel 24-24. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Hasuna? Yes. Ms. Lochran? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Curriculum 24-51 through 24-53. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Hasuna? Abstain on 2451 and yes to the other two. Ms. Lockard? Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Business 24-98 through business 24-105. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Is there discussion? Yes. 
Ms. Lee. I think we've discussed about the budget, and I want to make a comment about our tentative budget. Um, let me say a few numbers. Uh, in 20, uh, last year, at April, when we approved our budget, of 156 million, uh, at that point, um, we were budgeting for spending for 156 million. And then with the passing of the referendum, we now see a, a backtrack budget of 158 million. And then with a 2% increase on top of the 158, we're looking at the 162 million. So this is a 5.6 million net increase over one year. I want us to be aware of this uh, number. And with if we project to use 2% for next year, we're going to arrive at 165, which is going to be uh, 88.7 million, uh, sorry, 8.87 million, more than our um, last April's budget. That is going to be a 5.7% increase over the two years. And then that's, uh, for this year, this proposed budget is 3.5% over last year. So I want us to know that actual numbers. And uh, for this reason, I feel like um, our uh, allocated resource could be reconsidered to uh, consider the actual spending on the voters' choice for the current garden, which is not being operational yet, and be mindful of this impact on our uh, community. So I intend to vote on now, and I encourage you all to consider uh, reconsider this budget as well. I'm just, I, I do have to interject that, that your figures are incorrect. Which number? You, you have the numbers correct, but, but the, uh, the application of them is incorrect. And, and just for the record, I have to say that $2.46 million was approved for the referendum. That is outside of our normal budget process. So I feel to, to combine those two numbers when the voters did, in fact, overwhelmingly vote for this, for a specific purpose, that's outside of our current, current budget. I, I don't feel that we're being 100% transparent by stating that our budget has gone up this much just for spending. We know, and, and, and we've gone over this multiple times, that two and a half million of that is earmarked for full day kindergarten, which was approved by the majority of vote, people who voted. That's all. Can I ask a question? Um, so we had gotten like grants and, and funds like that. Is that included in the like increase of our budget? So if we were to get income from outside of say raising taxes, does that get rolled up into the inclusion of the increase of our budget? Uh, if you're, so <coughs> the resolution has a line called special revenue fund. That is where um, grants go, so like federal and state grants go in there in that line item, so that is not impacted in the general operating budget. If I, make, I can make a further comment, um, I hear what Mr. Beers was saying, however, I'm not convinced that the way that the full day kindergarten fund, the way that it is budgeted for is really allocated for that purpose. I'm not convinced. So. Again, my vote will be a no, and I encourage you all to reconsider this. Thank you. So I'm just going to interject here because you've said the same thing now three times. And just because you don't hear the response that you want to hear doesn't mean that the response isn't accurate or transparent. You're suggesting that the administration is doing something untoward with the budget. And I'm really kind of, it's upsetting to hear because it's ridiculous. The budget that, you're, that was up for last year was voted on in April. The budget in November was then increased by the popular vote. There's nothing that can be done about that other than making that absolutely the number that goes into this year's budget. To suggest that there's anything untoward going on is just ridiculous. I think we're all on record. How I said, what I suggested is very clear. I don't think there's a reason to speculate. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to add that I have full confidence in, in your skills, Peter, and, um, and I've heard nothing but the best of your reputation, so thank you for your work. And I think if there is money going other places, it's even if it's not going toward kindergarten this year, it, every confidence that it's going toward things that are going to help those future kindergarten students as they move through the district, whether that's whatever that, that might be. I think it was a, a little bit summarizing this. I think it was a great thing the community did. 
this is one of the areas we, we, we went out there and we asked the question, both what did you want to do? Kind of like in our strategic plan process, we asked the question. We said, do you want to fix, can you help us fix our facilities in this and here's how we're doing it? And then, you know, we were one of the, at the time, 10 districts in the, out of the state of New Jersey that didn't have full day kindergarten. We wanted to equalize equity and, 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 and bring our students better achievement and did that and they voted yes. I think as, as stewards of this community, we are very fiscally responsible. And I'm proud of the both the community that said, hey, we understand that and we're proud of what's going on. We want to be a, a community. We want to attract people in that way. And the vote they voted yes. And so that's a great thing. And I, I, I thank them for that. And the budget, there were, the, if they had voted no, there would have been no debt service aid in the budget. And they did vote yes. Let me put that in there. If they voted no, there would not be the additional operating costs to be used in both the preparation and fulfillment of the full day kindergarten. So, and, and in a budgeting standpoint, you know, they're doing their budget now, it's now March. We did not know where we would be in November until the third question passed. And that question was very clear that with the first question, the second question was tied to the third question. We took an iterative process through it. We educated the community, I think, quite well. I mean, there were a lot of people, maybe, may not, but I felt majority of the community had a good turnout. We did a good job. The administration, the board, and the community, so I thank them. And the budget is such, even though uh, we've absorbed some costs that we wouldn't have. For example, the uh, hazardous busing, what was that, $500,000? Yeah, between so the two towns, and, and we, yeah, so. Yeah, and the sewer bill. And the sewer so exchange. So that's close to a million dollars that we've yeah. Almost absorbed. Almost total cost in those areas last year was 1.3 yeah. we absorbed. So in a way, you know, in spite of all of that, the numbers look good. And we we're reducing our, our uh, reliance on fund balance. We're being more equitable removing the, the activities fees. So it's uh, those scenarios. I mean, we're being proactive in what we're doing and keeping what's best for students first. Any more comments? Yes. I think that the discussion we have right now isn't really about the referendum uh, itself. Uh, it's more about be a good steward for the, for the money that is at our hand right now. I think all of us has responsibility to see that it's uh, spent for its allocated purpose and spent efficiently. Thank you. Any more comments? Mr. Strauss, can you call the roll, please? Oh, first, I'd, I'd take a moment and like to thank you for the gifts. I'm sorry, I got a little misled. Mis I mean, we have a, such a, a great community in PTOs. There are several gifts here. Um, Clancy Enhancements by the Van Holten PTO. We have student certificates from the Hamilton School, Mr. Matthew Sh Shore. Shore, thank you very much. And pins and membership cards to, from the Bridgewater Raritan Middle School from Kai and Holly Barito. So I appreciate it. But Barito. Barito, thank you. I apologize my pronunciation team, but I thank them. And it's great. We, we have a lot of donations that help us throughout the district, you know, in areas and grants. So it, it helps us meet the needs and, and special areas that, you know, some are only budgeted for. So thank you. Mr. Charles, can you call any more comments? Wow. Mr. Charles, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? No to 24104. Yes to other. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Asuna? Yes. Ms. Lochran? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Special services 24-28 through 24-29. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Asuna? Yes. Ms. Lochran? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. So I have a question here on the calendar. Do we, which one is on there? Are there two calendars. Which one are you proceeding with under the calendars? Goes, okay. that, do we want to have a conversation for us and make a motion for us or separate? So uh, Parliament's procedure here, I'm not sure, Mr. Stars, yeah. Mr. Beers. If we can have some brief conversation and then you know, we'll move that one. Thank have you. A motion. So, so I would like to have a com conversation on the calendar at the moment. So those who have, we have this discussion, there were two calendars presented. Basically the difference is we're moving the end of the school 
or taken off January 2nd to the end of school or the other way. And I can tell you the two drafts that are there, draft six and draft seven. Draft six is what we presented to the committee. And after feedback from, from the committee uh, and, and <coughs> suggestions from the committee, we, uh, we created draft seven. And the major difference between the two drafts are, are as follows. It is the day that is January 1st. Second. I'm sorry, second. I'm sorry. January 2nd is a Friday. So on the first draft, we will be coming back to school on Friday the 2nd. And as Stacy's motioning, that was not <laughs> received well. Almost as well as starting in August. Um, so the change on draft 7 was made, giving us Friday the 2nd off. And then it pushes graduation to Friday, June 19th. Typically, we don't graduate on a Friday, but now we don't have project graduation or any of those things anymore. So that would be the high school graduation, most likely in the morning of the 19th. And the rest of our district is on a half day during that day. And I think June 19th, I think will be a federal holiday, right? The it June might 10th. be. So that's, that's perfect, right? Yep. Some people might be off. Graduation party Friday night. <laughs> put it up. I, I know it's not so on the table. I'll put it a plug for starting in August at some point in the future. I, I thought I would hate it, but it's at least from a teacher's perspective, you kind of get that work done at the very end of the summer. You kind of get like a soft start, and then you kind of get that Labor Day weekend to actually have a holiday, and then you kind of really take off. Everybody afterwards. comes in. So I know it's not before us, but yeah, I could, at least not the craziest idea. I could tell you that. We took that idea to the calendar committee back yeah. at the end of February, and it was basically greeted with a pretty yeah. deep <laughs> group of sighs. But, but also, uh, uh, I have to yeah, say, no, I don't know, some people did kind of agree to that if they had the Friday off. Well, they would come in Wednesday, Thursday, and then have that four day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Labor Day, Monday off. That's, that's a nice four day break. When right, and then you start on the already. second. The what did the majority say in the committee, AJ? Actually, a person who brought that up, well, I was surprised. So I, the, I, here's the problem. What it, the, the majority brought is a different calendar, right? I, I don't think that was... Yeah. If, right, uh, if we pushed it, I think... Uh, Cal <laughs> calendar 6 was my best <laughs> attempt to listen to the committee and, and place it on. Now, now, we should know one of the, the major differences as well in the calendar is that we did add Eid as a, as a holiday. And that's in both draft six and seven. So I had a question yeah. actually on that. Well, more of a more of a concern. First of all, I'm ecstatic that Eid is on this um, calendar. It's something that a large uh, portion of the community um, has been advocating for for quite some time. However, I was looking at the inclement weather, um, the excessive inclement weather days, which would unfortunately be February 17th and March 20th, which would affect Lunar New Year. And Eid, and I understand that we're in an impossible circumstance here because we do want to, you know, represent our diverse community. I guess what I'm, my concern is, and and I am a religious minority, so I, I deal with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, we don't have offer the second day of Rosh Hashanah, so students or staff who would like to use that day use the religious observance excuse. If climate change changes again and we do have to worry about taking Eid or Lunar New Year back. Um, I just want to make sure that it's understood that um, we really uphold the policy of ensuring that our students who are observing those holidays, if they did have to come to school or they don't want to come to school because they're observing those holidays, that they would not be missing tests, quizzes, major projects, or assessments, because that has been an issue in the past for Jewish students on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, including even this year. Um, so I just want to be sensitive and make sure that if we are going to use those two days um, as the inclement weather days, uh, the take back days, that we make sure that these students um, who would be observing Lunar New Year and Eid on the, that year, 2026, are protected. Um, and I also, again, wanted to say that I was looking at this calendar and realized that, unfortunately, these two holidays do fall after February, 
when we would be impacted by um, snow. Maybe. If, we have, if climate change decides to change again. So that was just my comment. Um, I did also think about it, Mike, <laughs> about like could we, could we get that one day in at the end of August so you could start on September 1st um, so everybody could come back on the 2nd, but if that's not, if that wasn't something that everybody was agreed upon, then unfortunately, that's where yeah, we are. So, so, so when we do have we two have calendars to, before us. When, when do we have to um, get this in by? This evening, but it's on the agenda. Oh, it's so tonight. we have two calendars before. So us. we don't have another. So I guess it. I have to take a straw poll. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, go ahead. Why does it need to be this evening? We, yeah, we always attempt to approve the calendar 18 months before the beginning of school, and that has been, I think, an ongoing. Mr. Starr, since you've been here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hasn't always been that way, but most recently, yes. Yeah, we tried since I've been the board. We try to do it 18 months in advance of the next school year. Well, it is silly to have the students and staff, you know, come back on January 2nd, and and I agree that if people are on vacation, they're not coming back for a Friday. So the second version of the calendar is certainly more palatable. So what happens if we don't have enough kids in attendance or teachers? <laughs> Let's, let's say we, we did the one where we come back on January 2nd. And if, for whatever reason, let's say half the school doesn't come back. It, there's no room. <laughs> it's, it's not only students, but teachers may not be in either. <laughs> I, I'm sorry I got lost in all the calendar talk. So the January 2nd calendar, where we would be theoretically coming back on a Friday, what was the change in order to make that happen? You push graduation one day oh, out. you push the graduation the day. It graduation is on in that calendar where you have you are in operation on January second would be June eighteenth. So it's a Thursday. With the June January second off, the graduation would be June nineteenth, which is a Friday. And, and and look, when we look at it, I I know I always get in trouble for saying we can overthink this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> The, the challenge, I can tell you, with the 25-26 calendar, and it's a while away, is every single holiday yeah. happens during the week. Yeah. Yeah. And Christmas on a Thursday provides one of the longest mm -hmm. winter breaks. So you have all of these forces at play. And, and then finally, we don't want to go into that last week of June, A, because if you've ever walked through a school in the last week of June, um, it's tough to see quality learning when it's that warm. <laughs> and, uh, and then second, we've got a lot of construction going on in the district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, it, it, there is a lot. And, and look, if, if the board wants to table it, we want to explore the, the August, I, I think that could be a prudent option to give us more flexibility as far as, yeah. as uh, uh, you know, a, as Mr. Singer had mentioned, you could build in that third day right so so you don't have the chance yeah. of giving up these religious holidays yeah. um, Mike what when do you guys start in August we, we, we start the two so teachers uh, since I've been at, in, in my district teachers have gone back the, the Tuesday and Wednesday before Labor Day okay so yeah and students start Thursday no I'm sorry Monday and Tuesday students Wednesday and Thursday for half days and right. then it's a four-day weekend yep and then you come back the students start Labor Day that's correct. Yeah. yeah, for for two. Yeah, hours. a lot of schools are doing that because of the all the holidays and everything. Because of this a, calendar, um, I I know Watchung Hills, mm -hmm. and Warren mm -hmm. have their teacher and service days, in August, yep. and what that does is you say okay, school starts on, on uh, uh, September second. You could build in that extra snow day and maybe have a little bit of wiggle room in your calendar, and we don't have to worry about yeah. You know, I would love to see us go back to the table and maybe look at that just to protect those holidays. Yeah. Okay. Um, we could do that. Yeah, I mean, if so we what can, we say? We why table not? This and come yeah. back at the next meeting. We'll have a meeting this. Week, I mean, next either week, way, maybe. Eid and Lunar New Year are going to be on the calendar. It's just a, a decision as to whether or not they're going to be take back days. Look, right? I can tell you, my see, uh, I'll show my bias once more. It's um, my kids at North Hundred and Voorhees. 
they their first day of school is August 20th. Right. I mean, and they're done basically at Memorial Day. And That's, yeah. and see, there's another strategy to that as well, where where it's biased towards your high school kids. But we talk a lot about homework and pressures and AP tests and the like. When you look at the AP schedule, those tests start the first week in May. Same thing with with state testing. Exactly. So, so you're, you're cramming everything. In, and, and you're right, Mike. I didn't yeah. think of that. Thank, thanks for bringing that up. So you're, you're cramming everything in. And, and there are districts, and I know Wachung Hills to a degree, uh, West Morris Regional, North Hunter and Voorhees, they chose to go in the direction of, all right, in order to alleviate this pressure and the crush on students in some of these high-powered classes, we started a little bit earlier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It just provides more instructional time and more lessons to, to do that. No, I'm not saying we should start on August 20th. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't go over. Right. Que a question. If, but if it, we, it's not a bad idea. And, and, and other people, as you said, have these professional days in August. And then I think parents know, if we set it up that way, hey, the first day of school is the day after Labor Day. And, and that's yeah. it. Yep. So this has an effect that you don't have. Correct. Correct. Is, is there for that uh, January, if we do go with the school on the second, any way to make that a, like a half day? <laughs> I would say, I, I, then no one's I'm already <laughs> mad at you for, <laughs> for saying it out loud. Because I've been in a district that had to come back on a Friday at the end of spring break for, so, for whatever reason. So when, when that was brought up by somebody, and I was very surprised who brought it up, that... Uh, 27th and 28th would be the PD days, 29th you're off, uh, and the, the uh, August. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I was talking about January 2nd would be the next Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, because they both land on the 2nd, that's why. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Monday. Yeah, so there were, although people didn't vocalize, there were a lot of shaking heads on the screen. So, so no I'm one said make, anything. But make it, I, I have a feeling the word's not going to put that on the I would recommend that we push this back uh, till the next board meeting we don't need to actually we don't need to actually make a motion for it so just leave it off secondly it, the last time this happened was 2014 and we actually lost spring break that year so a little history of that FYI so we lost spring break that year parts of it you know and, and teachers make plans so you know it's 10 years ago and the sun goes through a, a, a 12 to 13 year cycle climate's interesting I'll leave it at that so are we okay with just not, we're going to push it back. We don't need to make motion to table. Do I have a motion for other 24-30 and other 24-31? So moved. Second. Any discussion? If we would have to do, they would be done in closed session. Seeing none, Mr. Stars, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Pepe. Abstain. Ms. Freelander. Yes. Ms. Lee. Yes. Mr. Joshi. Yes. Ms. Kalistri. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm abstaining from in um, other 2430, 259366, and yes to everything else. Mr. Singer. On other 2431, no on 259585 and 260222, yes on everything else. Ms. Hasuna. Yes. Ms. Lochran. No, to 31. You're the only one that voted on 32. <laughs> We're not voting on 32. We're not voting on 32. Oh, sorry. It's it's duly sorry, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> Mr. Walker. <laughs> yes. Motion passes. Policy 24-16 through 24-17. So Is there a motion? Second. Discussion. I had one question. On 93-23, the one part, and I, maybe I didn't realize before, the word disability was removed on the second page. I'm just wondering why we're taking that out. Wait, um, which policy? Um, the uh, 9320. Oh, the one that we've reviewed? Yeah. That would be in the Strauss-ESME report, which is in the FFD directory. So there's some information there. Usually the Strauss-ESME, when they give a policy change, the reason why for it, correct? No, it was in our, it was, it was, it was community, community relations. relations. Sorry. So it it was in there. there. It was in our it was first in page. Yeah, it, I don't remember what it was. It, it explains why the changes are being made. Um, okay. It was Strauss has been made changes, not us. Correct. Yes. 
Okay. Any more discussion? Mr. Stars, can the roll, please? Mr. Pepe? Yes. Ms. Freelander? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Mr. Joshi? Yes. Ms. Kalistri? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Ms. Hasuna? Yes. Ms. Lochran? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Item 12, open to the public. Individuals and or groups are invited to present their concerns, comments, and requests to the Board of Education at this time for any matters. In accordance with board policy, members of the public are allotted one opportunity to address the board for a maximum of five minutes during this period of the meeting. Please be advised that a video recording of this meeting will be posted on the district's website. You need to please state your name and your address and write and fill out the form, please, too. Thank you. It's right there. Yep, it should be. I'm sorry, what am I supposed to say? Your name, name and address. My address? Yes. Okay. My name is Glenn Buno. My address is 833 Hawthorne Avenue in Boundbrook, but that's Bridgewater. Okay. Um, uh, I'm uh, grateful that I have an opportunity to present something, uh, and I hope you can help. Uh, in 27 days, on April 8th, a solar eclipse will be visible in the northeast area. In Bridgewater, the blockage at its maximum will be 92%. The eclipse will begin approximately at 2.07 in the afternoon. Maximum blockage will be achieved at 3.24, and the eclipse will end here at around 4.35. Uh, there may be some families um, in the district that would like uh, to experience the total eclipse, 100% blockage which provides a more spectacular experience. Um, unfortunately, the closest areas to Bridgewater where there's gonna be 100% blockage is at least four hours away, okay? Um, uh, like Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, Buffalo, Syracuse, uh, um, Burlington, Vermont. Uh, I'm even, I've been personally considering taking my son up to Lake Champlain because this is just literally a once in a lifetime shot. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, uh, the next total eclipse that'll hit this area will be in 55 years. So this, you know, maybe my son might take <laughs> his grandkids. Um, so I, I was wondering, now the extra nuance here is it's the first day after spring break. But I was wondering if it would be possible to allow students to have maybe an excused absence from school, provided it was used to do something like this. Um, where, I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to do it anyway because, again, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. My son loved it when we, the last time was, uh, I think, over the summer in 2017, I think it was. Yeah. This is not a back and forth, guy. Mike, Mike, it's not a back and forth. It's public Thank comment. Thank you. Um, and that was great because the library, uh, they even had live shots at the library of where it was 100% while, the, while everybody was there observing, I think it was 60%. Uh, so I was wondering if, it was an, if there was a possibility that the district would allow uh, uh, families, uh, students to be able to excuse, be excused uh, an allowable ex uh, uh, ex uh, absence to experience uh, the 100% uh, solar eclipse. I'm sorry, this is not back and forth, it's public comment, but thank you. Are you oh, so, oh, we, so we, I'm we, just we, uh, we, pitching yeah, that and you might, got, okay. If, if I or, thank you for if the I opportunity. If the superintendent would, would we like to address that? We can. You're more than welcome to email the administration and the board also. No, and I, I appreciate your comments. And, and there are activities we're planning in school, mm -hmm. um, you know, for that day. And, and um, it's always tricky to say what's an excused absence mm -hmm. because we have high school kids, uh, you know, and, and, and certainly there, there are different rules, et cetera, that are tied to, to attendance. But, but I mean, it, if students are, are within their limits or, or they're not at the high school, parents are more than able to take their child to experience what, what they do feel um, or what they want to see. But, um, 
but along those lines, we are planning for things in, in, in our classes during that day so kids can experience it safely. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Sean Scrifiano. Um, I live at 1689 Brookdale Drive in Martinsville. Um, I'm not here to talk about the solar eclipse, although just very briefly say I'm very much on board with what you just shared. I'm planning to take my children out of school um, to drive to experience the total solar eclipse. I also saw that I think Livingston or other nearby districts had uh, made a revision or had planned for this due to fear of kids exiting school at the exact time that it's occurring. and. Uh, elementary children looking up and possibly having damage to their eyes. I didn't look into how reasonable that is, but that is uh, something that is happening in other local districts. Um, so thanks so much for everybody for kind of dedicating your time. I really appreciate it um, to the, the school. Um, I struggled quite a bit with whether to come tonight, uh, mainly because I think, um, I I'm not sure if it will matter, um, but I kind of ultimately felt like it was necessary to advocate for my son. Um, I want to start by saying my husband and I very much appreciate the initial response we've received from Mrs. Honstetter and Dr. Sylvia about this matter. Um, they've been uh, very quick to call us and uh, diligently handle the situation to um, the best I think they could. Sorry. Um, so again, my, my name's Sean. Um, I have a third grader at Crim. I have a first grader who attends an out-of-district school. He is my, uh, my youngest son's provided transportation as a related service uh, in his IEP. He's the only child on that route. Um, he goes to a nearby public school um, in a self-contained classroom. Um, he came home on Tuesday, February 27th, uh, very upset, arrived home from the bus, came inside, reported that he was uh, hit by his bus driver. Um, we went through the process of requesting the videos through Bridgewater Transportation. Um, unfortunately, we were told the bus company did not have working videos on the bus, um, so we are unable to see what happened. I think at um, best, he was mistreated. At worst, he was assaulted. Um, he, uh, for a few days after that, had brought up to me concern of, are you going to send me back on that bus? Why did somebody hit me? Um, am, am I going to have to see that person again? Uh, which, of course, he is not. Um, and, and Bridgewater has handled that properly. Um, and we are currently driving him. Um, so uh, it's my understanding, um, and I, I apologize if I misspeak on any of these policies, it's my understanding that Video cameras are requ uh, requested um, on buses, especially special education buses, but there's no safeguards in place uh, for ensuring that they are working um, or that there are any consequences if bus companies do not have working cameras or are unable to produce a video when requested within a timely manner. Um, While well, I understand the technology can certainly fail, um, even if everybody was doing what they should have been doing, um, I also know just from also working in a school district, it's actually very common for these video cameras to not be turned on or not be working. Um, of course, nobody knows that until an incident occurs, a video is requested, and then we find out there was actually no video to be had. Um, so I'm really here uh, to the point that was made earlier. Hopefully this is the appropriate place to be, be saying this, uh, to plead for the board to consider um, enacting a policy to not only require special education buses to have working cameras, um, but have consequences in place if companies are violating that policy. Um, consequences would incentivize bus companies to ensure that cameras are working um, at all times and to turn over videos when requested. One suggestion could be to fine bus companies if they do not produce videos within a timely manner, maybe 24 hours. Um, another suggestion could be pulling videos randomly, um, certainly on special education vehicles. Um, and you know, with the inability to produce a video during that random check, resulting in a fine or maybe loss of a contract or something along those lines. Um, a second request would be to consider implementation of a more robust training procedure for school bus drivers transporting special education students. As of now, all school uh, bus drivers who transport special education students need to complete basic mandatory school bus safety training. Um, unfortunately, this is a bare minimum requirement and it's clearly not adequate for at least some of these drivers given what's happened to my son. It's feasible to develop training using district staff who might be more familiar with the populations of uh, students um, that are on these buses um, and perhaps they could provide uh, training that better suits those students, the drivers, um, and maybe have an opportunity to identify bus drivers who are not 
uh, in a place to meet the needs of the students on those buses. Um, you know, as a parent, I'm left very nervous to put my son back on a bus. Um, come ESY when that's going to be happening. Um, I'm also unfortunately in a position where I work full time and I rely on that transportation to get my son back from school. Um, if I could skip the bus altogether and pick him up, I would, but it's just not, you know, I have one she's child in Crim, one, one in, in somewhere else, um, and I work uh, as, in a school as well. Um, I believe stricter policies, as I said above, are necessary minimum steps to Thank you very much. District. We don't allow five minutes. I appreciate what you're saying, but we don't have this to adhere to a five-minute like rule. Two, literally, the last sentence. Do you mind if I finish, finish. literally the sentence? Yes. So I believe structure policies, as I cited above, are, are necessary minimum steps the district should be taking to help ensure student safety and the safety of my son. Um, I appreciate you hearing me out. Thank, Thank you. you. You're more than welcome to email that to the Board of Ed and, and the superintendent if you'd like also. I will. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for your comments. Is there any other public comment? Seeing that, I'm going to cl close public comment. Yeah. Old business. Is there any old business? Okay, seeing none. Is there any new business? Yes. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to recognize um, four Bridgewater Raritan High School students who were chosen by Rutgers University to speak at the Dare to Dream Student Leadership Conference today. Amongst them were Holly Lam Haley Lamka, Joseph Hollywood, Madeline Dolly, and Julia, Julia Irie. All four of these students spoke about their experience here at Bridgewater Raritan School District and how it has how their disabilities or challenges, how they have been supported by the school district and how they have overcome them to be successful teenagers. And I did uh, share Joseph Hollywood's speech with the board. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, you definitely should. It was inspiring and it should make us all very proud to um, have him here in this school district. Um, I also did wanna um, again thank the school district for uh, the work on the uh, new calendar and um, when I looked at it, I really looked at it and said, wow, we are a very diverse and amazing community, and it felt really good to see so many groups represented um, with their holidays on our calendar. Any other new business? If I want to echo uh, what uh, Stacy was saying, I think that our school district is doing very well in recognizing our diverse uh, population, and by the calendar items that were recognizing, and I appreciate uh, the comments about preserving our religious holidays, and I, uh, uh, I am on board with that as well. And uh, I look forward to discuss more calendar issues. Thank you. Go ahead. Just to sort of tag on, only because I know about the solar eclipse, um, because my daughter will be in Buffalo, and I was hoping to be there with her. Um, there are they're making some changes there because of. The lights won't be on like they are at night, and there won't be any light, and there's some dangerous road issues. And I'm just thinking about our high school getting out and the kids crossing and um, like what we're doing about that. It does start after our high school gets out. Oh, I thought you meant our high school. Two twenty-four. It begins. The, the maximum is sorry. Maximum is like maximum blockage. Is 90% in Bridgewater is at 324. Yeah. So we do have bus that's running during that time. Yeah, we're, I know. We're gonna do this, oh, we're gonna do this old fashioned thing. We're gonna work with it. Because there are other times when there are storms and it's pretty dark out. And I know if a solar eclipse is that, but it's that good old fashioned we're going to be okay. There, we're going to make sure the people are safe. No one's in danger. We're going to be all right. Just wanted to uh, plug real quick. Uh, I, I, I attended in person the uh, NJSBA Leadership Series, which is held in um, Mercer County Community College about two weeks ago. Ms. Lockerman was there virtually from her living room, I, I believe. I just wanted to plug what a wonderful opportunity um, because there are two more coming up, one in South Jersey, I believe in Salem County, and one in North Jersey and uh, at the County College of Morris. 
And I think each one is going to be have, have a little bit of a different focus. But I don't know if it's just because of the rain that day. There were only about 30 people present there in, in person, and maybe a couple dozen more online. But each, each speaker was, was wonderful. We had the county president. Uh, we had the president of uh, Mercer County Community College who talked about um, pathways, uh, getting college credit and different ways to uh, get credit for high school students. Uh, there, there was an attorney for a number of school districts who talked about personnel issues. He was able to field a number of questions, um, but like, like really good ones. I know sometimes you're at these uh, things and there are 80 people online and maybe you get your question answered, but this was a really, really wonderful program. I almost would have said it would have been worth it to drive to Salem County for it if it had been that one. So if anyone's considering uh, looking for something to do, I think it's the uh, I think it's like two weeks from now, then you can check the NJ SBA website. The leadership series, one south, one north, definitely worth worth considering going to. Uh, you can make some great connections. There was lunch; they didn't put that on there, and it's not just for board presidents and vice presidents because their uh, their uh, messages about it were a little bit confusing. It looked like maybe you had to be in the leadership role on your board to go, but that's just one portion of it. So I can't fly. I was saying thank thanks to them for a wonderful event, as they always do, and I can't speak highly enough about it. Yeah, it was it was a really interesting event, and I think the topic of the next one. This one was was it legislative on this one? Like, was that the whole? I believe this one was specifically personnel. Oh, it was per that's right. It was and personnel. The one, uh, the one coming up, uh, the one in near here in Morris is. I'd say it's a community focus on on communication. Okay, um, well, I just wanted to add that it was free, so okay. definitely take advantage of it if you can. It was worth it. So the next one is actually Saturday, oh, it is the sixteenth. And it's in South Jersey. And one other area that we're coming up is Monday is the Unsung Heroes at the Votech. I didn't bring this up early. So 6 p.m. is when the uh, ceremony, the, 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 the presentation starts. I know we have many of our staff attending as well as the student. So I had some conversations. Was, you know, I sent an email out earlier. I only got one response on. I'd like to, you can more talk to me after about that. But it's Monday at 6 p.m. at the Votech. Please come. There will be light refreshments, and it's a nice evening. So, all right. I, all right, thank you. Any other, any other new business? I entertain a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Have a nice evening.